15th of August, 1945. And the last word is written for the grimmest chapter in all human history. But long before peace, the government had begun planning to give the men who won the war every opportunity of winning the peace in a trade, a profession, or on the land. The three eastern states had accepted the roles of principles drafting its own scheme based on a common agreement between Commonwealth and states. And on the 28th of December 1945, the Victorian Parliament ratified the agreement and passed a bill to establish a soldier settlement commission. This is the story of how those few thousand words on paper are being transformed into a great and unique achievement. Since 1947, approximately 700,000 acres of crown lands and large properties have been developed and subdivided to accommodate over 1,600 families and soldier settlements. And in addition, some 2,000 men have been assisted to buy existing single-unit farms. Now let us see what lies between the plan and the achievement. To begin with, three commissioners were appointed. The chairman is Mr. H.L. Simpson and he has as his colleagues Mr. H. Homburg and Mr. S. J. King. These three men, with years of experience in farming matters, fully appreciate the problems of the man on the land. It's their responsibility to ensure, first of all, that no man shall be settled unless he is reasonably certain of making a success of farming. Every applicant has to be carefully considered so that only men with sufficient experience are accepted. Secondly, the commissioners must ensure that no suitable applicant is rejected because he lacks capital, although he is expected to contribute as much as he can reasonably afford. And thirdly, they must see to it that all land for settlement is subdivided, developed and improved to the stage where it can be brought into production by the settler within a reasonable time. To this end, soil experts carry out intensive tests before land is broken up into individual holdings. Soil samples are taken from different levels for analysis. The results of these scientific tests determine the suitability and ultimate use to which the land will be put. When holdings have been allocated, field officers, the local supervisor and a man from head office, brief the settlers. This is a scene that has been enacted hundreds of times, and every time it's a momentous event for the men concerned. The field officers not only issue advice and the necessary instructions, they also make the settlers aware of their responsibility to the land that will be theirs. Now let us see how, in accordance with the Act, the land is developed and improved to the stage where it can be brought into production by the settler in a reasonable time. This is tough, dry, Mallee country near the Murray River. But it's not useless country. The soil is good, it only needs water. And as a lot of water flows a thousand miles down the Murray from the Alps to the sea. Here then is how the Soldier Settlement Commission tackled this job on Crown land at Robin Vale, way up in the northwest corner of the state. Soil tests had shown that, given water, this land could grow vines and citrus fruits. First the scrub and timber must be cleared, and every available mechanical means is brought into action. Modern equipment performs in a fraction of the time the work that meant for the pioneers of a couple of generations ago and even for the soldier settlers of the 1914-18 war, months after months of back-breaking toil. The machinery is made available by the Commission and the developmental work is done by the settlers themselves under the guidance and supervision of an expert officer from the Commission. For this work, the settlers are paid a wage. cleared, it must be broken up with ploughs and graded ready for irrigating. In the meantime, the work of taking the water to the soil is being pushed ahead. There was already in existence at Robin Vale a weir that banked up a great volume of water. This was the water that was to be brought to thousands of acres of dry soil infusing it with a productivity that it had never known before. 
the first requirement was power. It would take time to install pumping machinery to meet the demands of this new territory, so a pumping plant was moved from a neighbouring district by the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission to permit initial establishment without delay. Meanwhile, work proceeds on a new station capable of serving the whole district when it has been fully developed. Looking like strange prehistoric monsters against the skyline, huge excavators were digging mile after mile of trenches to take the pipe. on this job of opening up new country are, appropriately enough, new Australians. Men from the shattered countries of Europe now making their lives part of the life of this nation, helping to build her towards an ever-increasing prosperity and security. And in the wake of the excavators come the pipes. First the big sections to take the main flow of Murray waters. These are the arteries of the scheme. The versatile bulldozer makes light work of pushing tons of earth back into the trenches. Then come the smaller pipes to take the branch flows to individual holdings. This part of the job is done by the settlers themselves. the awkward operation of sealing every joint in the depths of the trench, the pipes are cemented and stacked in pairs before laying. Stand pipes to tap the water are then set in at intervals. Once the pipes have been laid, the banked up waters of the Murray can be diverted. The timber from the cleared land has already been carted to the pumping station for fuel, so even the power for pumping the water comes directly from the land. And now at last the water can be released to bring richness to the thirsty soil, richness to the settler, new prosperity to the nation. The settlers now have their land and their water. But what about a house to live in? The men and their families are accommodated in small utility structures while their houses are being built. In the case of the Robin Vale settlers, the houses are prefabricated 250 miles away in Newmarket. Modern machinery cuts out the frames more accurately and infinitely more quickly than human hands. These houses are part of the structural improvements effected by the Commission to each holding. The Commission assumes full responsibility, financial and otherwise, for their erection. And the settler is not burdened with any problem other than his anxiety to take possession of his new home. The Newmarka factory supplies houses for settlers along the Murray Valley. Elsewhere, the houses are built by the Commission through private contracts. And so the makings of another house begins its long journey to the destination where it will soon become a home. On the site, the stumps have already been put in. And when the prefabricated frames arrive, they are placed as near as possible to their ultimate location. A small mobile crane and a well-organized team of workers make erection a speedy job. Thank you. 
the settler can go right ahead into the future. In Robin Vale, where the newly opened up land is given over to vineyards, his first job after planting the vines is to put in the trellis posts and wires that will support the grown vines. Once again, machinery short circuits time. The power driven auger digs post holes in as many seconds as it would take a man minutes. are drilled to take the brackets for the wire along which the mature vines will be trained. Now a pleasant prospect of green vines, of friendly, comfortable homes, and of gardens that splash their bright colours everywhere. This earth is flowering as it has never flowered before, giving richness and a good life to scores of fine Australians. Knowledge and hard work have between them produced a new community in a remarkably short space of time. Concentrated irrigation and cultivation carefully controlled, draw from the earth an abundance of wealth without in any way impoverishing the soil. Where there was only Stark Mallee scrub on that historic 15th of August 1945, there is now this richness. Most of the pioneering work has been completed. The vineyards are established and have settled into the routine of the countryman's year. A routine that means plenty of hard work but work that brings a rich reward in itself, and not merely in money. Only the countryman knows the deep abiding satisfaction of working the land, his own land. And every year he knows the satisfaction of bringing the harvest home, whatever the harvest might be. At Robin Vale, it is the great. As they are picked, the grapes are brought in for dipping. They may be dipped in a solution of carbonate of potash and olive oil, which removes the bloom, helps drying and resists mold. Or they may be dipped in a hot solution of caustic soda, which splits the skin and thus makes for quick drying in good weather. On these racks, which have also been built by the Commission, the fruit is laid for the first stage of drying. When it has dried to the stage where it can be handled, hessian is laid in position to catch the fruit as it is shaken down. Shaking down means work for every member of the family who is sound in wind and limb. They need to be, because this really is hard work. Finally, the drying and curing of the fruit is completed on hessian under the rays of the open sun.
sun drying gives the fruit that gold brown tint with which all housewives are familiar. At length the fruit is packed and made ready for its journey to the markets of the world. But the full good life means more than work alone. It means education and sport and recreation. And all these too are enjoyed by these 20th century pioneers who have turned a wilderness into a garden. This then is what the Soldier Settlement Commission has achieved with virgin land at Robinvale in less than four years. Four difficult years of labor and material shortages during which the Commission has had to scour the world for timber, iron, wire and cement. Now let us see how the Commission has dealt with a different sort of territory at New Merca, 250 miles further up the Murray Valley. This is an area where the rainfall is suitable only for dry farming, but irrigation from the Yarrawonga Weir makes possible intensive cultivation and closer settlement. In the Numerka and adjacent districts, great open channels carry the water long distances from the river. Irrigation means that country such as this, formerly devoted to dry farming, can be developed for intense cultivation, thus promoting closer settlement. In and around Numerka, the Soldier Settlement Commission bought former wheat properties and after the usual soil test, broke them into smaller holdings for dairy and orchards. But before development could begin, it was necessary for the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission to build many more miles of open irrigation channels. For once horses and not machines are seen moving the earth. In this instance, there is a very good reason. The horse's hooves serve to pack the earth into solid banks. Smaller channels reticulate the water throughout the district. As in the Robin Vale area, scientific analysis is made of the soil. Here, particular attention is paid to soil permeability as shown by water penetration. These tests are carried out for the commission by experts from the Department of Agriculture. This truck is, in effect, a mobile laboratory. The first step in testing is to ram a steel ring well down into the soil. The section of soil to be tested is now sealed off and the water cannot spread laterally through the earth. The amount of water soaking into the isolated section within a given time is checked on a gauge. Then the surplus water is baled off, measured and subtracted from the original quantity poured into the ring. A probe reveals the depth of penetration, and from this the important factor of the rate of penetration can be derived. But there is still much work to be done before the land is brought to the stage where it will provide that reasonable living within a reasonable time. For irrigation purposes, the land must first be graded. Here again, the services of the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission are co-opted. And at Robin Vale, much of the preliminary work is a cooperative affair, 
the settlers in the area working as a team. Another case of all for one and one for all. After grading, check banks must be built up. Check banks control the runoff of water so that the settler can be sure of a regulated and even distribution. This machinery drags the loose soil along the surface, banking it up. A kick on a pedal trips the release gear. The scraper lifts and leaves the banked up earth in a long heap. Finally, a crowder pushes the earth into the neat, finished check bank. the land is ready for sowing the pasture. Fertilizer is mixed with the seed. The Commission's supervision of all holdings ensures that the land is treated kindly. Addition of superphosphate maintains the fertility of the soil and encourages the growth of pasture while control of stocking safeguards the young pasture and thus promotes rapid development of the block. A combine simultaneously cultivates the soil and so to see. Now the water flowing mile after mile across country is tapped and taken to the new holding. The flow is measured by water wheels and regulated by sluices as it flows onto the graded paddocks to seep into the soil and stimulate the growth of the pasture seed. The result is rich pasture, a succulent nutritive growth for the settlers' dairy herd. Much of the pasture is mown and stored for off-season fodder. After raking into heaps, it is allowed to dry before being stacked. This prevents heating and mold. In some cases, the settler himself brings in the hay and builds his own stock, using his own utility vehicle. But sometimes the settler will employ a contractor to bring in the hay for him with a modern pickup baler. Specialized and costly machinery such as this is not an economic investment for the average settler since it would receive comparatively little use. But it is often economical to employ a contractor who uses his machinery on a great many farms. In some instances, the Commission owns specialized machinery which is hired or loaned to individual settlers for specific jobs. Sample bales are weighed because the contractor is usually paid for the actual weight of hay that he handles and baled hay makes stacking much easier than laying bricks. Thus at Newmerka too, the water brought down from the Murray has made the soil yield its hitherto untapped wealth. In this case, rich fodder. Rich fodder means thriving herds and an abundant yield of milk and butter for our fast-growing population. The Commission also helps the settlers to install modern dairy. This is a typical example.
Milking machines are increasingly important in these days of acute labor shortage, and where necessary, the Commission assists in the financing of their installation. But dairying is not the only industry being developed by the Commission in the New Merca district. The extension of irrigation channels is enabling ex-servicemen to engage in fruit growing too. And young orchards such as this will within a few years be contributing their full quota to the pool of the state's primary wealth. Already 750 acres of land have been given over to new orchards. And here, as elsewhere in the state, ex-servicemen's houses have already achieved that snug, lived-in look that means happy, prosperous homes. Fruits and dairying, now wheat. One of the areas where the Commission is settling wheat and sheep farmers is Kamaruka in the North Central District. Here, a settler is sowing his crop. He is independent, hard-working, and he has the intense satisfaction of being his own boss. Without the Commission's aid, he would not perhaps ever have known just what this means. The Soldier Settlement Commission of Victoria would be rendering the nation a vital service if only in this, in giving so many Australians the opportunity of individuals in a world of ever-widening standardization. Australia can never have enough men like this, for her vitality depends on men with characters of their own, not on men with mass-produced minds. The man on the land who fought for freedom knows that it was worth fighting for when he sees his crop ripening and realizes that when he harvests the result of his labors, he is doing it for himself and for his family. But the settler does not forget either that the prosperity of the country is its production, nothing more and nothing less, and that every bushel of wheat he pours into the great pool of national wealth is another bushel of prosperity and security for the nation. And so the harvester goes out for yet another load of the life-giving grain. Once again, labor shortage is overcome by machinery plus ingenuity. Engineers assist the farmer to adapt his machinery so that he can hold all the reins from one point of control. labor-saving devices at every stage, from reaping to the storage of the grain in railhead silos, mean swift handling as well as infinitely greater production for man engaged in farming.
close handling has reduced the time and labor required for the handling of bag wheat to the merest fraction. Instead of 50 to 60 bags per truckload to be manhandled by the old methods, bulk handled wheat simply pours through a hatch in the bottom of the truck. Elevator belts inside the silo convey it to the storage bin, whence it can flow by gravity into the bulk rail truck. Ex-servicemen settled on the land by the Commission have increased the nation's wheat yield by many thousands of bushels. Now let us move southward to one of the largest volcanic plains in the world and to a still different type of settlement. Langi Kalkal in the Western District is yet another example of the way in which the Commission is increasing the overall productivity of this country. Until the Commission took it over, Langi Kalkal was a typical large sheep run spread out around an impressive homestead. It now contains 32 individual holdings. For the most part, the sheep had been grazed on natural pastures, such as this. But when the commission took over, it carried out intensive pasture improvements. The soil was prepared by ploughing and a cover crop planted to protect the new growth of subterranean clover and ryegrass. This pasture is infinitely more nutritive than the native tussock and supports many times the number of sheep previously carried. Every possible yard of soil was brought into economic production. In this instance, by draining swampland on the property. The greater concentration of stock, with consequent closer supervision, has also effected a great reduction in the rat menace. But the settler and his dogs still see to it that the pest is minimum proportion. On this property, once ridden with them, rabbits are increasingly hard to find. Drilling has tapped ample resources for the watering of the vastly increased flocks that are now being carried by the improved pasture. which are also among the improvements effected by the Commission, provide cheap, independent and efficient pumping power. In some cases, as at Langi Kalkal, the Commission has been able to purchase the existings along with the property. In such cases, once the holdings have been prepared, the sheep are distributed among the settlers. From Langi Kalkal, 15,000 were divided among the settlers on various estates. Sheep being a uh, sheep, sorting the flocks keeps both men and dogs on the alert. But eventually they are persuaded to go into their appropriate yards for marking. is released. This is a great moment for the farmer, a moment to stir the blood as he proudly drives his first flock home, a flock of fine merinos that will be the nucleus of farger flocks in the years to come. But for the Commission, these men might never have realized such satisfying independence.
The thrill of driving home the first flock is only exceeded by the thrill of urging the sheep into the shearing shed and watching the first wool clip come off on the floor. These sheep yards and shearing sheds are typical of Zonalangi Kalkal Holdings. All outbuildings on properties throughout the state have been erected by the Commission as part of general improvement. Another truckload of the produce of Victorian soldier settlers sets off on its long journey to the markets of the world. Every bale enhances the nation's wealth, and thanks to the Commission's policy of concentrated pasture improvement, Today, many times more bales leave Lange Cow Cow's pastures than ever before. From west to east, to Rose Hill near Bensdale in Gippsland. At Rose Hill, as elsewhere, the Commission is scientifically developing the land to achieve maximum productivity. The rich flats of the Mitchell River, once exclusively devoted to sheep and fat cattle, are now the scene of an expanding dairying. Here too, houses specially designed for comfortable living in the southern climate have been erected by the Commission. The more intensive use of the land results in closer settlement, and new communities such as this are growing up in many parts of the state. Neat, modern shedding is also supplied as part of the general improvement on all properties. Furthermore, the concentration of settlement has made possible the reticulation of electricity. Herd testing enables the farmer to keep a check on each animal and thus maintain a high pitch of production. But the growth of dairying here is not the end of the story. The new industry is also a stimulus to private enterprise and transport contracts convey the milk to factories for processing into a variety of products. These manufactured foods are flowing out to accommodate not only the needs of our expanding population, but also the needs of our markets overseas. Markets of vital importance to Australia's economy. But the task of the Victorian Soldier Settlement Commission does not consist only of developmental work. The Commission also has a regard for the man who sees an established property and knows that this is the thing he has dreamed of. If he has enough capital to buy it, the Commission will assist him. This facility is only in Victoria. Here is but one such property near Tongala. It's a well-established orchard, complete with house and all outbuildings. It was for sale. An ex-serviceman saw it and wanted it. He entered into a contract with the owner, made his own contribution to the purchase, and the Commission advanced the balance at the 2% rate of interest that applies in all cases. A dead loss to the government? By no means. Apart from the fact that these men have earned their security in fighting a necessary war, every family established on the land is an asset of incalculable value, paying dividends in national prosperity and a rich heritage for the generations to come. But four years of achievement does not represent the sum total of the Commission's work. In Gippsland, for instance, the Glen Maggie Weir on the McAllister River will water the projected Nambrock Denison Irrigation Settlement. At Hayfield, the township has come to being to house the army of employees of the Soldier Settlement Commission and the State Rivers and Water Supply Commission, who are engaged on the early constructional work. Before the water can be brought to the area, channels, races and pipes must be laid across plains, over gullies and even under a river. 
A coffer then has been erected to hold back the waters of the Thompson River while a giant pipeline is laid below its bed. When the scheme is completed, Nambrook Denison will be second in size only to the Murray Valley Settlement. We have seen but a few representative examples of the work of the Soldier Settlement Commission in Victoria in widely separate. To appreciate its full extent, these visual impressions must be multiplied a thousandfold. In every case, the land and properties taken over have been directed to the most effective possible use in the light of the findings of the Commission's experts in the various specialized fields of agriculture. Nothing is wasted, not even the buildings on the properties bought for breaking up. Here is an instance of an existing homestead being put to the best possible use. The large, comfortable homestead on the Bowang property was sold to the Returned Servicemen's League for a nominal sum. It is now a rest home for invalid servicemen. All the commissioners were present at a simple ceremony when the chairman, Mr. Simpson, handed over the Bernawang homestead to Mr. Holland, the Syrian branch of the RSL. Soldier settlement scheme means more than happiness and well-being for the men who fought to preserve freedom. It means a great heritage for the Australians of tomorrow.